I can never be more far away from you than, than this. Some years later, she met her second great love, British actor Richard Burton, on the set of Cleopatra. Both were married at the time, and their very public affair became an international scandal. Unquestionably, their torrid relationship was one of the century's great romances. Describe him for young people now who may not remember him that well. Richard? Mm. Good God. Shame on you. Where's the camera? <laughs> right there. Shame on you. I'm mad for you. I Go to a video store and rent and of a thousand days. Rent Beckett. Rent Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? I want you to get yourself a little alert. I want a little life in you. Stop that! Pull yourself together. Richard Burton was a great actor. And a hunk. In 1964, they married. Throughout the 60s, the Burtons were the most celebrated couple on the planet. Their wild, jet-set lifestyle made them superstars before there was such a word. Burton showered his wife with spectacular jewels, including the famous 33-carat Krupp diamond. The Krupps were a German family that supplied munitions to the Nazis, and Taylor writes, quote, helped knock off millions of Jews. How perfect, she wrote, it would be if a nice Jewish girl like me were to own it. It was up for auction. Richard said, I'm going to get you that ring. I'm going to get you that ring. Look at it the hypnotic beauty that pulls you in and doesn't let you go. Is it heavy, my dear? Would you like to try it? I would love to try it. OK. OK. Don't get any fingerprints oh. on it. Look at that. Get it in the light. Well, thanks a lot, Elizabeth. The interview's <laughs> over. We'll just all go home. <laughs> Burton gave her other important historic pieces, like this 16th century Taj Mahal diamond necklace. Its original inscription reads, To my beloved Mahal. And on the back, look at the incredible detail. Here, the magnificent hieroglyphics on the King Farouk bracelet that belonged to an Egyptian king. And the exquisite La Peregrina pearl. It is one of the world's finest examples of a pear-shaped natural pearl, and was once owned by Queen Mary Tudor of England. Shortly after you received that pearl, you had quite a scare. It disappeared. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Taylor and Burton were in a Las Vegas hotel room. As Elizabeth walked back and forth with the pearl around her neck, she suddenly realized it was missing. And there was nothing there. There was nothing. And I heard one of the puppies chewing a bone. I thought, that's wrong. We don't give the puppies bones. And one of the puppies was going, and you could hear the pearl. Uh, chewing on the pearl. <sighs> Thank God there are no scratches. Did you ever tell Richard? Weeks later, weeks later, Elizabeth, when you look back over that period of your life, remembering it in part from all of these magnificent jewels, what are your thoughts when you look back? How grand it was, how lucky I was that I was their guardian, their protector, and nobody could have enjoyed them or had more fun with them. But the jewels Burton rained on her couldn't calm the growing volatility between them. They married and divorced twice. I think we loved almost too hard. I think you become so much in the other person's pocket, in their mind, in their soul, that you begin to lose your own identity. Hard to understand, isn't it? Yeah, thank God I had it. Can you ever imagine having it again? <laughs>